We've heard so many people say it. Now is a bad time to buy. Let's take a couple of minutes and debunk those myths and talk about why now is a great time to buy a house. But first, my name is Jeffrey Chubb, and I'm a retired investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. And I'm Sammy Eliopoulos from Guaranteed Rate. I'm one of the top mortgage brokers in the country. All right, Sammy, interest rates just hit a high point not so long ago. Give us some, um, well, professional insight here. Yeah. So rates have just hit a 24-year high with the average rate of 7.79. Let's rewind a bit. Last time we saw these levels were in October of 2000. First point to make is what goes up generally goes down. And I'm going to point out that home prices went up in 2000. I think to understand why now is a great time to buy, we need to talk about why interest rates have actually gone up. Solid point. At this point, we all need to know about inflation. We live it. We feel it. Each time we go to the grocery store, the feds don't like high inflation. They aim for 2% inflation per year. So in order to decrease inflation, they need to slow down economic growth. They do this by increasing interest rates. And that is what we have been living and experiencing as the Fed shacks up rates and trickles down to the rest of the economy. And it's working, well, in, in some areas at least, but let's keep our focus on real estate. The increase in interest rates have actually slowed down the housing market. And by slowing down the housing market, the end result has been a slowdown in actually housing pricing. Sammy, I mean, when was the last time that you've seen an offer that was accepted and was for $100,000 over asking price. It's been a long time, at least a year plus. Yeah, exactly. The increase in interest rates are doing exactly what they were meant to do, to slow down home price inflation. You meant depreciation, right? Nope. I meant inflation because that's exactly what a lot of that housing price increase was in the last couple of years. So let's get back on track as to why now is a great time to buy. Yes, you've heard the saying that the best time to buy is when there's blood in the streets, right? More times than I can count. So basically, you're saying that the best time to buy could be when everybody else is saying it's the worst time to buy. Exactly. And that's what I did back in 2008. People thought I was an idiot to buy at that time. Single-handedly, that two-family property will most likely be one of the best investments that I'll make in my whole entire life. And that is what we're seeing today. We're seeing time and time again, qualified buyers opting to rent instead of buy. And the reasons generally revolve around either rates being too high or their belief that housing prices are going to go down. The interest rate one really gets me. I understand if it's centered around affordability. That is if someone can afford the house at the higher rate. But if you aren't buying because you are waiting for rates to go down, then you aren't really looking at the full picture. 100% agree here. If you buy a house today at whatever the rate is, then you essentially get to have your cake and eat it too. You lock in your costs of borrowing and thereby get financial security while always having the option to refinance if rates go down. Exactly. I don't see too many landlords out there locking in rents for 30 years with no annual increase. Yeah, no, landlords are not that generous. Plus, the interest rate argument really doesn't make a lot of sense. And the fact that if or when interest rates go down, then that means more buyers are going to rush to the marketplace. And what happens when you get more demand? You get higher prices. But talk to me about examples when higher rates uh, would make it so that it doesn't Makes sense to buy. Great point and great question. If you currently own a home and are locked into a low interest rate, then it may not make sense for you to sell and then buy. I always use myself as an example in this scenario. I live in a house with three bedrooms and we just had our third kid. Naturally, we're the people who should be in the market to upgrade, but we're not because we are locked into a 2.75% interest rate. However, there's a luxury that is easier for you as a single family homeowner. You can't do things like put an addition to a condo. Yeah, no. That's very true, but all in all, this is a great example as to why now might not be a good time to buy if you're one of those move up buyers. So let's talk about those that are saying now is not a good time to buy because housing prices are going to go down. This is one that I have tried to show specific data points time and time again, but some are just being blinded by hope rather than actually evaluating the realities. So what are the data points that you're talking about? I love history and I actually did a video on this one. I went back to the last time in history that we had high levels of inflation. So this takes us back to the 1970s. And you know what happened in the 1970s? What happened? Prices went up every single one of those years. And the 30-year fixed rate average topped out at 11.2% in 1979. Woo, 11.2, all of a sudden 8% doesn't seem that bad. And it makes sense that the housing prices increase in high inflation environments. Inflation increases the prices of everything from food, services to house. Yeah, no, exactly. The definition of inflation is when you increase the money supply. Okay, so if what I think I'm hearing is that you're saying that the housing prices are not going to go down because of overall inflation in the economy. Correct. Once prices become elevated, generally, they're going to stay elevated. Generally? I say generally because we can have times of deflation. A great example of this is like 
when we saw back in the Great Depression. So what is the difference between now and 2008 than for home prices? Because those prices went down. Yes, those prices went down. But the price increases that we saw then were not due to overall economic inflation. They were due to a lot of things, including irresponsible lending practices that led to a lot of unqualified people buying houses as well as a great deal of speculation. So it's your belief that home prices will go down due to overall inflation. But what happens if our economy goes sideways and we go into a recession? Yeah, that's another great question. Again, let's go back to the 1970s when you had high inflation rates. Housing prices went up even in an environment of an 8.5% unemployment rate in 1975, 7.7% in 1976, and 7.1% in 1977. But if we were to go into depression, then it's a whole different story. And quite frankly, Home prices should actually be the last of your concern. Right, Frank, I'd rather be in a house that I own than a rental because the landlord's going to get me out of that house a heck of a lot quicker than that bank is going to foreclose on me and get me out of that house. But sorry, I, I got sidetracked again. Those are all really great points. I agree with you that so many people that are saying it's not a good time are being blinded by hope that prices are going to go down and not by looking at the actual data. Look, it makes sense. It's human nature to think now is the worst time in history and you use the most recent historical data point as an anchor point. So people today are anchoring their hope of housing prices going down to what happened back in 2008. But historically speaking, recession and housing price declines do not necessarily work in tandem with one another. We've seen home prices go down the last two of the last six recessions, and we all know what happened back in 2008. The other time housing prices went down was in 1991, and that was a 1.8% housing price correction. 1.8%? That's hardly a reason to be putting off buying a property. Heck, Calculating the tax savings of a year of ownership probably outweighs that 1.8% housing decline. I actually, I, I couldn't agree with you more. When you rent, you have less financial stability due to a landlord always being able to increase your rent. You pay 100% of the interest rate as you get no other benefits of renting and you miss the tax benefits that owning a home gives you. Writing off the interest expense on our house is a game changer every single year. And one more thing to think about. What's that, Jeff? Well, we talked about inflation and what the increasing supply of money and the economy does, but we should also probably talk about the increase in the population. <laughs> Great point. The growth of the population is far outstripping the new supply of houses. It's all simple supply and demand equation. More demand for housing, but yet supply is not meeting the new housing demand. We have a lot of people that have come into this country in the last couple of years, and we do not have enough housing for them. And we aren't building it either. If you have any questions about the home buying process or are thinking about making a move, then we would love to chat with you. Yes, whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in Massachusetts or anywhere else in the country, then we can help. I work with agents all over the country and I'm happy to make an introduction to ensure that you get a quality agent that knows what the heck they are doing. And I'm obviously happy to do this at no cost to you. And to that point, I can help anyone with a loan anywhere in the country, single family, condo, investment, big or small, I do them all. You can find all of our contact information in the description below. You can also reach out to me at youtubrealestateagent.com. Until next time.